Yo, what's going on everybody? It's straight out of Boston here, and today I'm back for episode number 12 of my 1998 Tampa Bay Devil Rays OOTP series here in Out of the Park Baseball 16. And today we're back with the 2001-02 offseason here as we are ready to come back after a pretty disappointing playoff exit. We got swept by the Seattle Mariners, for those who don't remember, in the ALCS. Now the Mariners went on to lose in the World Series to the Atlanta Braves in a, uh, in a matchup of... Uh, pretty much the two most stacked rosters in this game. Uh, now, I guess this this is this roster isn't as stacked as it used to be. Um, if you guys remember, like, let's go to the history of the Braves. Whoops. Uh, let's see. They yeah, look at this. So they won. I guess '97 wasn't. We technically started the series in '98, but so since we've started this series, they won 106, 106, 101. Then actually had a quote unquote down year this year. And only won 91 games, but they did win their second consecutive title. So the Braves are your champions, and well deserved. Like I said, that is an absolutely loaded roster and a great organization so uh and it's cool i kind of didn't want seattle to win it so all right anyway we are uh now ready to go into the off season so um it's gonna be i don't, I don't know i really haven't prepared too much for this off season like i don't even know what uh the outlook of the team is going to be or anything like that um let's look at personnel leaving first we're gonna we gotta get a new bench coach pitching coach and inning coach now i think i want to keep some of these guys yeah i think these are all guys that i hired personally so i'm gonna try and keep them um oh i probably should have worked on this before the offseason started whoops yo what's going on everybody to straight out of boston and today i'm back for episode number 12 of my 1998 tampa bay devil rays series here on out of the park baseball 16 and today we're back with the 2001-02 offseason here as we are coming off of a another disappointing playoff exit uh now luckily this season we were uh able to win a playoff series which was nice uh, but we did get swept in the ALCS for those who do not remember and the Mariners went on to face I don't even know who in the World Series It looks like the Cubs and the Cubs actually swept the Mariners here. So that's nice to see um, I know they were playing the Braves in the championship series. The Braves were the 2000 World Series champions so they uh, Could not repeat here, but this Cubs team looks like it was pretty good hundred wins this year pretty nice pitching rotation there look gets a little weak at the end, but uh we see guys like Milton Bradley, Rafael Palmero. That's a nice pickup. Sammy Sosa, Brad Wilkerson. Young Brad Wilkerson at that, too. So, All right. Uh, pretty good team there. Definitely deserve to win it. And they beat Seattle, which is cool because I didn't really want Seattle to win. So, all right. Um, as for the offseason now, I did re-sign uh, my pitching coach, hitting coach, and uh, bench coach as they were all up for an extension this offseason. Uh, their contracts were expiring, but I got them all back. I figure this coaching staff has been pretty good to us. Ever since we put this group together, we've been winning um, you know, 98 games a year, basically. So uh, I think we'll try and keep most of these guys. And uh, or at least if we can, I'll try to keep most of these guys. But as for the offseason, I don't really know what the outlook's going to look like. Um, I, I sort of talked about it a little bit in the past, what I want to do with the pitching staff. You know, I think it's likely Loiza is going to be gone. We'll probably call up one of our young guys. Um, I would say Manny Domingo is going to be the front runner to take that uh, fourth starter spot, or that fifth starter spot, excuse me. But we'll certainly have other candidates, um, and we'll certainly have a bit of a competition for it, which will be good. Um, but other than that, you know, the lineup... You know, it's unfortunate. It's it's very tempting after kind of a disappointing playoff exit like that to to want to really shake things up. But I think this team is is good enough to win. Um, we have David Sagai for another year, so that'll be good. We'll keep him at first. We're gonna keep Canard going left. Um, we could look to move on from you know a couple guys who are making a you know a considerable amount of money. Sean Green, uh, Cliff Floyd, if we can, I, I'd love to try and get rid of. Um, he's making. He's got one more year left on the deal. One guaranteed year left on the deal. He's got a buyout. It's a, actually it's no buyout. It's just a flat team option in uh, year number three. So hopefully we can unload him. And Green, I think he's got a fully guaranteed deal through 2003. Yeah, so... Um, I, yeah, I think I would want to move these guys if I could and free up some money. Um, so we'll, we'll look at both of those options. Uh, I definitely going to keep Randy winning Canerco. So the question is filling out those last two spots. We don't really have anyone within the organization that I would say is... Uh, you know, like a young budgeting position prospect. Um, but, you know, we do have some young pitchers. We could look to flip a couple of them for, uh, you know, potentially for a, you know, a good position player, good outfielder, something like that. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But uh, let's look at salary arbitration. So, all right. Uh, let's see what we're going to do here. Loiza going to be gone. I think I'm going to offer him arbitration, though. We should be able to get him. He's going to be listed as a type A for agents. So, yeah, we definitely want to offer him arbitration. We definitely want to offer Je Je Jeff Shaw arbitration as well. Um, he ended up having a pretty solid year. And in fact, if I could bring him back, 3.8 million. Mm, it's kind of a lot of years for a guy his age, though. I would much prefer if this was like 4 million for two years. 
And I mean, we could even make that a player option if you want. And okay, four million for two years. Um, should we leave it a player option? Or should we just guarantee it? What if we guarantee it? All right, so that's fine. Um, what if you made it a team option? All right, he did that too. That's perfect. So we basically get Shaw back for one year at four million with a four million dollar option, which is nice. Um, Mercer's also a free agent, but his stock has really fallen. We might not be able to get get him back cheap, but I don't even think it's worth it at this point. He's been so bad the last couple of years. Yeah, I don't want to pay two point eight million for him. So we're gonna let Mercer go. And Sienna's we're also going to let go. Uh, his value is probably really low right now, but he's still demanding a lot of money. So no thanks on him. The only guy of this group we're going to bring back is Shaw. Loiza, well, I mean, what does he want? Five million. Yeah, I'm just not going to pay that for for a starter that we don't need. So, all right. Uh, now the question is with position players. So, guys, we might want to think about extensions for Daniel Wilson, certainly uh, an option. He had a good year this year. I'd bring him back at the right price. I think he's established himself as like a good middle of the rotation type of pitcher. Um, and maybe even in this era, he could probably be like a number two on a really good, on a, or, you know, on a semi good team. Um, now he's only looking for 3 million this year. So let's do three and then maybe get him for like 4.5. Um, if you can't get him under ex an extension, though, he is a guy that I might look to deal. Um, he, you know, he's a guy, especially I could deal him for a position player and then uh, potentially just use both Josh Fogg and Manny Domingo in the rotation next year, but then we might be leaving our rotation a little bit weak. So it's going to kind of depend on what Wilson wants to do here now. He's going to be 28 next year, so this will be his 28, 29, 30, 31 season. So we could even do his age 32 season if he wanted, but I'd feel more comfortable if that was a team option. But let's see what he thinks of this contract. All right, so he doesn't really want to talk about an extension right now. So I would say the likely scenario is we might look to trade him and try to pick up an outfielder. Um... And then go with the two young arms. And hopefully Domingo can just sort of step into Wilson's role. Um, but other than that, guys who I might uh, float extensions to, it's probably not too early to think about Hudson. I think I want to lock him up as soon as possible. Saunders uh, had another good year. His ratings still aren't that high, but he's sort of been, you know, he's he does what he does. So I think we'll try and give extensions to both Saunders and Hudson if we can. Um, let's see. Hudson... Now the thing is, okay, so he's already he is uh, open for an extension, which I definitely am happy to give him. Now we just got to work about the price here. He wants about ten million a year. I would honestly like to get that down to nine if I can. And then we don't need team options there. Um, what do we want? Maybe seven years. So we have is 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Those thirty-two would be a team option. Maybe six years, yeah, six years with the that last year being a team, or we can we can do seven years with two teams if he likes it, if he wants that. Um, at nine million per, and I think nine million for Hudson is is, is worth paying him because he's that good. He is a stud. So, my question is, can we get these numbers even down a little bit further? Maybe we could do five and maybe three, three five, seven five, and then nine. Um, and you know what? We'll even take the team option off that year, and we'll, we'll guarantee his age 32 season because he's going to be that good, I'm sure of it. Um, so seven years, not what he had in mind. Okay. All right, sorry, I got that distracted for a sec, but I did uh, submit an offer that Hudson liked, so I went back to closer towards his original demands, 10 million a year. Uh, when he hits his free agency years, we got three, three, five, two, eight, and seven, five. So, all right, that's a pretty good deal, and that last year's the team option, so it's only guaranteed through his age 32 season. So, all right, we'll lock him up. Uh, he is, you know, going to be pretty much the face of the franchise moving forward. Now, I'd also like to lock up Saunders if I can. I'm not sure how open he's going to be to an extension. Um, we will see, though. Let's Could we do six and then maybe eight for, let's say he's 27, so we could do five years, maybe a six year with the team option. All right, so that offer suits his needs. Now, if we go any lower, he's just going to get mad, I would imagine, right? Yes, okay. So let's not screw with that. That's a fine contract to offer him. So we will do that. Um, let's see, three years. Get this number back up to eight. And then it's the same thing. We'll guarantee it through his age 32 season because this is going to be 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Okay, so we'll make this a team option if we can. All right, there we go. So six years, team option for the sixth year, but it's about $8 million a year when he gets to free agency. So pretty fair contract, I would think, for him. And he just missed out on being um, free agent eligible next year, actually. He would only needed, what, 100 and, like, 
70, I don't even remember what the number is. I think it's like 172 days of, of service to accumulate a full year. So, suck for him. Um, let's go back to salary arbitration here. All right, so we're going to get both Saunders and Hudson on uh, long-term deals, which I like. We're going to get Jesus Sanchez back. He had a good year last year. Solid lefty reliever. 4-3. Um, I'm not going to quibble up our money with these guys. Um, Jason Veritek, despite the down year, he did rebound pretty nicely in the second half, and he's still a pretty nice catcher. So we'll keep him. Um, if we gave him this extension, that's really not a lot of money for him. I mean, I wouldn't want to give him that much term. But uh, he's, you know, he's a pretty solid player. Five-win year. He's probably closer to a three-win player. Like, this looks like it was a product of... I mean, he did cut down on the strikeouts that year, but he also didn't play in as many games. Um, so, you know, if he's a three-win player, he's probably worth $3 million a year or so in this market. Um, I might wait, though. I mean, he's not, you know, he's not a stud or anything. And, you know, maybe next year I'll look to lock him up long-term in his final year of team control, but he's just not a guy I feel I need to overextend myself for. Um, Neil Roberts, uh, we probably don't need to bring him back. I think we'll just let him go. Aaron Ledesma, I think we'll bring back, though. I'll keep him over Roberts just because of the the Major League experience and the track record of success that he has over over uh, Roberts. Um, Canerco, so he's got three years left, so he would be another guy, I think, that uh, if we could get an extension done with him, it would be ideal, despite, you know, I mean, he did come back and have a good year in the second half. Um, so I don't know if he's looking for an extension right now. I mean, could we do four and then maybe plus, plus two more and go all the way to 10. I mean, I'd pay 10 million a year for this guy. Um, and maybe do eight years, make that eighth year team option. I don't know if he really wants to talk extension right now, but preliminary offer. All right. Sounds reasonable. So we'll lock Canarco up as well. And Randy Wynn. Um, Wynn, another guy I don't, uh, you know, feel like I need to lock up, especially because if is going to be playing left field, then playing Wynn in center does kind of diminish his value a little bit. So he's not a guy I'm really keen on locking up right now. The, you know, he's a guy that when we get into the final year of his team control, I'll think about uh, if we really want to keep him on the team long term. But, um, you know, the, the guy... If, if you're if you don't you know if you're not in your final year of team service and you're not like a, a you know stud like Canerco or Hudson or even Saunders then um yeah it's probably not worth the uh the the time or the effort so all right um we are going to bring Ibanez back because if we do plan on trying to trade well you know what I'm not going to I'm not going to do Ibanez just yet I want to see if I can move Floyd and Sean Green if I can move those guys I'm definitely bringing Ibanez back if I can't move those guys then I'll probably just cut Ibanez or look to trade him I'm probably get something for him but uh all right so that is that. Uh, now I'm going to shop around, see maybe what Wilson gets on the market, see what Green and Floyd and all those guys. I'm going to look at some trades, see what I can do, and I will get back to you guys. All right. Well, I did not expect this because when we traded for Sean Green, who did we... I don't even remember. Like, who did we get him for? It was like nothing. Yeah, it was Miguel Cairo. who wasn't nothing, but I mean, look at... He's, he's a 4A player now. I mean, look at this. So we, you know... And he was, I think Green was one of the only offers we got for Cairo. But look at this. Look at these offers. And one is going to pop out. Ken Griffey Jr. Now, hold up. Let me just go through the rest of this list and explain to you guys why I don't think I'm going to trade for Ken Griffey Jr. Um, yeah, all right. So there's there's a lot of really good prospects there, a lot of good position players. Um, the thing about Griffey is he makes a lot of money. Um, you know, he pouts. You know, he seems like he's got an attitude issue. Uh, it's a lot of money. It's not a lot of term. Uh, so, you know, we probably wouldn't have a problem affording it. But, you know, $9 million, he's been a two or three win player the last couple of years. And, um, you know, he's not he's not good in the outfield anymore, apparently, which I don't get because his ratings seem like they should be good. But his, like, center field rating is trash. So I think I'm going to stay away from, from Griffey Jr. Um, it's so tempting, though. I don't know. Maybe. I mean... Could put him at DH. Oh, I don't know. Nine point six a year though, and if he's really got an attitude issue, um, I mean maybe he. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm so torn. I feel like I should do it just for the hell of it. But like then, then you look at some of these other guys we're getting offered. Like, um, you know, this guy Brandon Cantrell, who looks like he's going to be this beast of a contact hitting shortstop. Um, and he looks like he could probably play pretty soon. 
Uh, what are what is outfield ratings? Just a curiosity. Yeah, not too good. So we'd probably have to keep him in the infield, um, which means. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe it means we move Eckstein and play Cantrell at shortstop. I don't know. I think if I if I could do that, then I might go with that deal. What if I can move Eckstein for Griffey? I might do that. <laughs> but we'll see what we'll see what Eckstein can get. Plus, then I could stop worrying about butchering his name so much. But I think Cantrell's gonna be a better player than Eckstein. Um, he's definitely got a higher ceiling, and he's a better defender. So I think that's a definite upgrade. And if we can make that, then we should. Uh, the only question is what X time we get is because you sort of you know this is all just balancing our assets, because um, you know we have a limited amount of assets, we have a limited amount of resources, so we have to uh, balance them accordingly. But we'll see what X time's market is. All right, so what if we could trade him for Ken Griffey? Like that would be great. I think that would make everybody happy here. Um, yeah, and it's clear the Mariners have a zillion outfielders. But this would be great, especially if we played the Mariners in the postseason again. Can you imagine? If we played the Mariners in the postseason, I think Ken Griffey might hit 800 against them if they seriously trade him away. So uh, if we can do something like this, I'm down. And we have the money even without trading Green or Floyd. And because the term is so short, then I'm really not worried about the money. I'm really just worried about his attitude. But I don't know. We'll see about that. Um, so let's see. Ooh, ooh, oh yeah, we're definitely doing this then. Okay, so I want to keep Sepulveda. I want to trade him because he's going to be insurance on our outfield. Um, I'm trading Saunders, of course. I don't really want to trade Jesus Sanchez or Hector Mercado, but Mercado was so bad last year. But then at the same time, I also feel like, what if I traded Jason Johnson? Well, he's hurt, so I can't trade him. What about, um, like, Corey Koski? What do you think of Corey Koski, Seattle? Guy claimed off of waivers last year. All right, so that improved a little bit. We give him the Frank Knapp. I think I might be willing to do that. Or Paulo Gonzalez, for that matter. Um, although I kind of like Gonzalez a little bit. Pound throw. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to find a deal here. Ooh, this guy. Oh, yeah. The, the uh, I don't even know what the word is. The, uh, well, whatever. I'm not, I don't even going to try and say what I was going to try and say. But, all right, we'll definitely throw in John Simpson if we can. Um, now, what about if we wanted to keep... Oh, yeah, what, this McDonald, Mike McDonald. I feel like we drafted Mike McDonald. Um, I also would trade Lloyd Sellers, I think. Um, what about this McDonald guy, though? He's 19. Oh, but he's horrible. Okay, cool. So we're going to trade McDonald then, too. All right, we're doing both these trades. I love it. We're going to get King Griffey Jr. on the team because I know that's what people are going to want, and, you know, I am a man of the people. i got to please the people. Plus, uh, like I said, if you play the Mariners in the playoffs next year, he's going to hit... He might hit above a thousand. That's he's gonna be in full revenge mode. All right. Yeah, I'm sure the fans love getting Griffey Jr. on the team. So, all right. We'll see how he is. I'm hoping he's not gonna be an attitude issue. I hope he's not gonna be a problem. But all right, let's go back. Uh, so I think Can Trouble's on the Rangers. I want to say, and he's gonna be one of their prospects. Oh, okay. He definitely wasn't that then. Um, let's just shop green around then, I guess. Here he is, Sean Green, shop around, and then, so I'm thinking if we DH Griffey, you know, we might even be good with just Ibanez and Sepulveda in right field next year. I think we probably won't make another, like, uh, trade right now. I mean, if there's someone in free agency that I want to get, then I think I'll, I'll, I'll be active, um, in, in, or I'll, I'll, I should say I'll be proactive in getting, uh, in getting a guy if I really want him to play that right field spot. But I think if we enter the year with Ibanez and Sepulveda, that's not a bad idea. Um, because one of them might really work out. Okay. Cantrell was on the Phillies. All right. That makes sense. But Cantrell is going to step in. He'll be our everyday shortstop next year. Um, cause he's clearly ready. He's got the ratings for it. There's no one else here. I think that is nearly as good as Cantrell. I mean, Maybe this catching prospect, Jer Jeremiah Matthews. But we've already pretty much made up our mind. I mean, we need a shortstop at this point. So we're going to go Cantrell. Um, I don't know what that word means. I'm hoping it's a good thing. Conscientious. Oh, con. Yeah, okay. I think it's I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's a good thing. All right, and he's a good defender. So, all right. I uh, like everything about this. So let's do it. Sean Green for Brandon Cantrell. All right. So, once again, no offers for Cliff Floyd. It appears that we might just be stuck with him. But it's not a bad thing. You know, it's only one year left on the contract. Like I said, it's not a ton of money. I mean, it is. $4.5 is, is is enough that I want to get him off the team. But it's not a ton of money. It's not the end of the world. And, you know, if we are going to sort of enter the year with kind of like the, the, you know, sort of a question mark in right field, that doesn't hurt to have another body there, especially if guys go down. So, 
I think we'll keep Floyd for now. Um, you know, really more, and, and it's not a it's not a choice. But I, my point in my my whole point in this is that it's not the end of the world. Like I don't really mind keeping him. So. All right, and here are the offers for Daniel Wilson. So not quite as uh, good as the offers we got for Sean Green, but still some pretty big names here and some pretty nice prospects. Um, now, the only thing I'm thinking is because we don't really need... I mean, we don't need to move Wilson at this point um, just because we pretty much filled out our roster by trading Green. I didn't think we were going to be able to get a major league-ready player for Green. Um, so getting that shortstop was, was really nice and kind of unexpected. And now we don't, you know... Like this, like this Jeff Kent offer and this Edgar Renteria offer, like we just don't need to make those deals anymore. Um, and this would have been perfect to, to flip because Renteria has only got one year left of team control, so that would have been a perfect move if we had to. We end up having to do if we had ended if we had ended up having to do that, it would have been a, a good move. But um, we could get one of these pitching prospects, which I wouldn't be opposed to. This guy, for some reason, has already been pitching in the big leagues. I don't know why. Um, but. You know, if you were to trade Wilson, it wouldn't be bad. But, you know, I think that at the same time, I might, you know, I guess this guy's a pitcher apparently too. I thought it's a short stop. I am blind. Um, man, I really am blind, especially for those who've been watching my uh, Braves series. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, what I'm referring to. But, um, yeah, I, uh, so mm, I think we'll probably just keep Wilson. I mean, if we're really all in on next year, it's probably best to keep him. And, you know, pitchers get hurt so easily that it yeah i think we're probably better off keeping wilson so i think we'll do that but all right so that, that those are the moves we're going to make we i guess we only make two trades but um all right so that those are the moves we're going to make pre-free agency now i'm just going to skip ahead um we'll get towards the end of salary arbitration we are going to keep raul abanez um so let me offer him a contract one point we'll do 1.7 and there we go all right so i'm going to cut out now and get back to you guys right around the start of free agency all right, I do want to cut back in and mention that I just claimed this guy off of waivers, Toby Brock. Um, he's got four and a half star potential. Another one of these, you know, maybe late bloomers. Or guy I'm hoping is maybe a late bloomer. Um, he's been in Double A for the last couple of years. Has really struggled. I'm not sure if he's a starter. He's probably gonna be a reliever uh, based on that skill set. But I think he's hurt right now. Yeah, he's got. Yeah, so he's got three months left. So we're gonna put him on the DL. But uh, I did want to share this with you guys because this guy looks like he could be. Oh, can I not? Okay, whatever. Um, but this guy looks like he's going to be a, you know... Or I figured I should at least mention I claimed this guy off of waivers. All right, just claim two more guys off of waivers. These guys actually, I think, might be good players because they're only 23, both of them, and they've both got three-and-a-half star potential. This one's an outfielder, Maurice Brandon, who we just got from uh, Seattle. <laughs> just getting all of Seattle's outfielders. And Jose Medrano, who looks like he's going to be a beast of a reliever at some point, uh, got him off of the Yankees. So four-star potential, too, not just three-and-a-half. All right. All right, and now we have got the first year player. Oh, rest in peace, Daryl Hamilton. Anyway, we've got the first year player draft here. Um, so we only have one pick, I believe, this year in the first round. Uh, I don't think we have any compensation picks, but hopefully we'll have a next year when Loiza signs elsewhere. Uh, let's continue the draft. So, all right, we're going to be picking late, of course. So I'm not sure what's going to be available to us, but we'll skip ahead, see what does fall. Or who does fall? I should say not what. That's that's kind of <laughs> disrespectful. But uh, all right. So I already see one guy, Eric Bedard, but he's a strictly bullpen. He doesn't have the stamina. Um, I think we're probably better off looking at position players because uh, we have plenty of pitching prospects, and I think we have plenty of good pitching that um, we might be better off looking at position players. Like I said, so. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, if if one of the, yeah, it looks like these guys are all relievers though, so I'm not gonna go after them. Uh, but we've got Bill Hall here. Middle infielder, bit of a high demand, but uh, certainly not a bad insurance option for either of our middle infield spots. We also have Orlando Hudson, but he's fragile, so I think Bill Hall is the way to go here. So we're going to get Bill Hall, and Eric Hinsky, actually. Ooh, let's look at Hinsky. Ooh, I like his offensive ratings. Don't know where he fits in, though. I mean, third base, we have Roland. I'm not trading Roland yet. I'm hoping he bounces back, but... Now, of course, in real life, Hinsky could play a bit of corner outfield. Doesn't look like that's the case this time around, but I think we might go Hinsky anyway. We just drafted a middle infielder. Granted, we traded him away, but... Um, and Hall, there's a chance Hall will fall because of his demand, so I think we're going to go Hinsky, who, of course, was on that Rays team that made the World Series in 08. And then, let's see, I think because there's so much... Yeah, there's so much gap in between... Uh, 
look at this. We're picking a hundred and no, 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 we're picking. I don't know what overall this is, but there's so because the, because of the old free agent rules, there's so much gap in between your first and second round pick. So unfortunately, we weren't, we weren't able to get uh, we weren't able to get who we wanted. But anyway, uh, that's besides the point. I'm just completely losing track of what I say. Like every time I talk now, ooh, this guy Carl Sat. Ooh, and he's a lefty. Yeah, I'm going with him. Perfect. And he's durable. Perfect. I see Jeremy Affeld. He's a starter in this. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, Mark Hendrickson, is he actually a starter? Is he another one of these? Oh, well, he's bullpen emergency at least. Um, what about Carlos Silva? Another strictly bullpen guy. Yeah, these guys are all. I mean, this is a crapshoot. I don't really care for any of these players, to be honest. I mean, this guy's only 21. Maybe we'll just go with him. Oh, he's not well liked by his teammates. No thanks. Alright, I'm just going to complete the rest of the draft. I don't really want to. Just let the CPU. I'm, I guarantee the computer's got a better chance at uh, picking players than I do. So, maybe again, VMart to the Tigers. And PV, Mark Pryor, Travis Havner. Some cool names in here. Brett Myers. Red Sox had back to back picks. Oh, why? Why Why would you do that, Boston? Come on. David Ross. Oh, I don't know why the Red Sox would do that. Well, I guess they technically haven't learned yet, but you know what I mean. It's just. Ugh. Whatever. Oh, we could have gotten Brandon Phillips. Oh, well. Um, all right. So I'm going to cut out again. All right. So we are back at the start of free agency. Now, Esteban Loaiza did end up declining, and he is a type A free agent. So that is great news for us. That means we're going to get uh, whoever signs him, we're going to get that team's first round pick next year. So excellent news there. That is exactly what we wanted to happen. Um, now, other than that, I haven't even looked at the awards yet, so I have no idea if we won anything. Um, but let's find out. So we'll just go by AL uh, Gold Glove. I don't see any Devil Rays there. Um, I don't see Ken Griffey Jr. either. I was just checking. <laughs> um, Reliever of the Year. I don't think we won this. Yep, Calvin, Calvin Escobar. He is a beast in this game. That is for sure. Um, Platinum Stick. Do we win any of these, maybe? No, nothing. All right, then. Um, rookie of the Year. Tim Johnson, they don't even show the voting, so all right. Um, Cy Young goes to Pedro Martinez. Barry Zito second and Tim Hudson third. So, all right, I'll take second and third. And Martinez had an absurd year. We saw him in the ALDS, and we did get to him in the ALDS. We actually hit him relatively well, but, um, yeah, look at that. Two and a half, really knocked him out after four and a third. Um, but, yeah, he had a beast of a year. 10.1 strikeouts per nine, 295 strikeouts. So, I mean, it's just not going to compete with that. So, that's fine. Um... Getting second and third, quite quite impressive in my book. Um, MVP didn't even place there. That goes to Pools. No surprise with his 12.3 wins above replacement. It's absolute ridiculousness. No more third. And what, Valentine. Ooh, this guy had a good year. Is he a catcher? Yes, he is. This guy's a beast. Um, but all right. So that is that. We don't win any awards. Yeah, because we didn't win. We didn't win Jack. Did we win Manager of the Year by chance? I don't think. It, Oh, no, that's... Oh, I didn't look at Rookie of the Year. Okay. I was looking at Manager of the Year. That's why I got confused. Okay. Rookie of the Year, we didn't even place, though. Pools gets Rookie of the Year, too. Oh, my God. It's just not even fair that he's not... <laughs> I'm so not looking forward to playing the Mariners again in the playoffs next year, but all right. Um, let's take a look at the free agents. So, I think we have um, some money to work with. Probably not a ton. Uh, let's take a look. It'll show us when we go to the free agent screen, of course. And we don't have a glaring need. I mean, that right field spot, yeah, we don't, we don't have a ton of money anyway. On that right field spot is something we could look to address, but, um, you know, unless it's it's someone I really, really like that I can get on a really good contract, I don't think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go after it. Um, but let's see here. Sort by overall, not potential. Come on. There we go. Okay, so um, now there could be some good deals here. Uh, getting another reliever actually wouldn't be a bad idea. Whoa. Ugeth Urbina. Whoa, look at the seasons he's been posting. Oh, my God. Whoa, that is ridiculous. I don't even know how. That's probably that, that 182 Babbitt, but still. He's a beast. If he wasn't a type B, I really don't have the money, though. See, if I could have moved Cliff Floyd. Uh, whatever. Charles Johnson. Does, does he want to be a backup? Oh, he wants to be a starter. Well, I would have brought him in as a backup if you wanted, but um, the last Charles Johnson is the last African American uh, starting catcher in Major League Baseball. Just wanted to say that I did a research report on that uh, in a class I took last spring about the lack of African American pitchers and catchers in baseball. And Charles Johnson, the last African American catcher to to or to be a full time starting catcher in baseball, 
2005, I think, was his last year. So, anyway. Um, other than that, yeah, there aren't really... I mean, Shane Andrews, eh. I mean, just don't have the money. I think we'll look at relievers and see what we can do there. Um, and, man, Arbina would be nice, but we just don't have the money, unfortunately. Uh, but, uh, yeah, everyone else, I mean, there are some... There's certainly some relievers I can already see myself going after. Uh, ooh, Mark Loretta I totally would go after if I had a hole up the middle. But I do not have a hole up the middle, so we will not be going after him. Um, J. Bell, Mario. Oh, boy, I'm definitely signing Mariano Rivera. I like how the Yankees traded him to the Blue Jays, so we've already sort of gotten over the whole, like, division thing. So I'm definitely signing him. Uh, Billy Wagner. Wow, there's a lot of good relievers in this class. And Jim Edmonds, too. Wow. That's weird. All right, let's look at relievers. All relievers. All right, so Mariano, I think we got to go with. I mean, he's Mariano Rivera. Come on. Even though he isn't, he isn't even really the Mariano Rivera. Wow, this is this is just disrespectful. Not an awful guy. Oh my god. I'm disappointed. At OTP. I, I I'm honestly disappointed. I'm signing him anyway though. Um. What did it say about him? Not an awful guy, but it's clear he doesn't have the team's best interest in her. Okay, I don't want to have too many of these guys. I mean, him and Griffey, I might get kind of bad, but let's see. If we could do a short-term deal, I would. Like, two years, team option on the third. I'll up this to $4 million, though. Use for all. All right, so I'm, I'm a little, I mean, I think we might end up getting outbid on Rivera, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and then Billy Wagner... I might try to bring in as well. Now, at this point, we're going to be, like, we're going to have no money left, uh, which kind of concerns me, but... Hmm... Might do it anyway. Let's see. Wagner's coming off of kind of a down year. Actually, hasn't really been good for a couple of years now. I don't love his track record. But then again, he is usually a beast. I'm just... Hmm... I don't know. It's coming off of a down year. We could get him on a, you know... A, cheaper deal than we should otherwise, but oh, I don't know. What are our other options? Maybe we should just sign Rivera. I don't know. We have Romero, Sanchez, and Mercado for lefties. Um, Sean, Neal, Wilson's going to be back in the rotation. Williamson. <laughs> I don't even know what to think of Scott Williamson. So, I mean, we definitely could use another reliever. Wouldn't necessarily have to be a lefty, um, but I don't know. Wagner, it's just the opportunity to sign Billy Wagner is really tempting. But we might pass it up. Let's see. Heredia. I mean, Heredia had a better year last year than Wagner did. Hmm. It's also always the ability to trade for relievers. Those are never hard guys to get. So I think we're going to pass on Billy Wagner. I think we'll just stick with Mo. All right, so I'm going to cut out and uh, get back to you guys when we figure out what happens with Mo. All right, so we've got the Rule 5 draft time. I added a couple guys to the 40-man. I think I added Corey Kosky, Domingo Espinosa, and Manny Domingo to the 40-man, uh, but I think that's going to be it for the guys we need to add. Now, let's see if anyone actually falls to us this year. I don't think I've I don't think I've picked a guy in the Rule 5 yet this entire series, so uh, I'd be kind of surprised if that streak ended this time around, but we'll see. We have had guys picked in from our team. I think we lost Julian Hernandez in the Rule 5. Um, although that was not really a big loss. Um, now, there are some half-decent players here. Um, let's start by overall, because we got to have a guy that can produce. I mean, if we could get a, you know, if we get a reliever, an effective pitcher, I wouldn't be opposed. Um, Damian Jackson, Matt Anderson. Um, hmm. Yeah, there isn't really much. There really isn't. Uh, what about this guy? Ted Jarvis? Nope. Then there's this guy, Samuel Trimbath, but he's, I mean, uh, I don't know. He's really the only guy I'm considering right now. I mean, it's the Uh, Let's take a look at him. Where would he go? Here he is, Samuel Trimbath. Oh, I don't even really like his ratings. Yep, yeah, all right. Another year, uh, another another Rule 5 draft, another year where we're not going to pick anybody. It's clear that the Rule 5 draft is a little bit more diluted than it is uh, in a standard OTP game. Um, but, oh well. 
Diluted is not what I meant. I meant the opposite of diluted. I meant uh, yeah, the Rule 5 draft now is pretty barren. But all right, we get Mariano Rivera. So I did have to up the offer. I ended up giving him $5 million a year. The Indians offered him like four point. Uh, oh, I don't even know. It wasn't even that much. I think they only offered him like 4.1 or 4.2. But I knew if I didn't just completely trump their offer, uh, then we were going to just start getting into this, um, you know, stupid uh, bidding war that was just going to make the contract go where I didn't want it to go. So I decided 5 million. If he doesn't want that, I'm not going to get him. But we got him at 5 million. So we will take it. And he's 32. So hopefully, you know, these diminishing stats aren't uh, a sign for the future. But uh, like I said, it's only a two year deal. It's a 32 and 33 year old seasons. So. I don't really think it's going to go that poorly, um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I, I'm glad we got him. I think we needed to, to add another arm to the bullpen. So, all right, that is that. And other than that, you know, pretty much set for free agency and such. So I think I'm just going to cut out now and come back to you guys at the start of the season. All right, so we're back. We're at the end of spring training. I've cut the roster down to 25 guys as always. And actually, are we, we look like we're a reliever really short. We might have an extra position player, do we, by chance? Yes, we do. Nope. Yes, we do. Um, who are we cutting here? Okay, well, we'll figure it out in a sec. Uh, actually, no, we should figure that out right now. What am I doing here? Why is this screwed up? Is it because... Oh, it's because I have Cantrell on the team still. That's why. Got to send him back down. All right. Now we're all set. Now we've got... Now we can add one more reliever. And I got to fix... Let's see. What are we doing here? We want... Canerco backing up first, and we want Michael Hart backing up short. All right, and yeah, every third game for Sepulveda and right. Copy and paste. Um, actually, against righties, we want Sepulveda. We want Sepulveda in there more than Ibanez. We'll do every second game for that. Actually, no, we'll do every third game. We'll do. We'll set it up like this. We'll just do every third game each way. But I want. I want Sepulveda playing more against right-handed pitching because that is uh, he has higher offensive ratings against righties. Um, all right, and now we can call up. I knew we were a reliever short. So the question is, we have um, J.C. Romero. Is he healthy or not? All right, he's still out for another seven weeks. So we'll put him on the 15-day DL. We could actually put him on the 60 because it's retroactive. So we're going to call up Carl Sadler then because we're definitely going to want another lefty in there. And um, maybe Hector Mercado as well. So we'll call up two more lefties. So we've got three lefties in the pen. And let's see here. Players DFA'd. We can send all these guys down to AAA. Because that is where they belong. All right. So, uh, yeah, I've cut the roster down. It is, of course, as always, not the roster that... Uh, or not the roster it's going to look like in 20 days. Because we've got plenty of rookies I'm planning on calling up once we wait the 15 days or whatever it is uh, to get the extra year of service time out of them. That's going to include Eric Kinski. Um, Cantrell will probably call up. I don't know. I mean, it depends. The game might send him down to double A, and if he's in double A, I might want well, to I mean, I'll probably call him up anyway because I don't want to. I don't want Aaron Ledesma playing shortstop too much. Um, Domingo, we're going to call up. I have Josh Fogg in the rotation right now. I care much less about his service time than I do about Domingo's. Uh, so we're keeping Domingo down, but he'll be back up for probably. He'll make his third start of the year, I bet, in Tampa Bay. Um, and yeah, so those are the three guys I'm going to call up. And I would, even if I could, I'd actually, I'd keep Sadler down, but because of the JC Romero injury, we're going to need to keep Sadler up because we're going to, we're going to need to get, uh, at least some of these lefties to work out for us. But all right. So you guys pretty much already know what the roster looks like. Saunders, Hudson, Zito, Wilson, and then Fogg. Of course, this will be Domingo, as I said, um, in the rotation. Mariano is going to be our closer this year. Jeff Shaw setting him up. Williamson, Sadler, Sanchez, Neal, and Mercado also all in the bullpen still. Uh, Danny Knowlton is another guy I'm going to give a look at a look at at some point. Um, if you guys remember, he is the reliever we got when we picked up. Uh, I don't remember who we got uh, or who we gave up for him. I should say he's the reliever we got. We traded Alex Gonzalez. That's what it was. And Ryan Christensen was that it? Oh no 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 yeah yeah it was Ryan Christensen. We traded from we traded Ryan Christensen to the Blue Jays for him. Okay, that's what it was involved in another Alex Gonzalez trade, apparently. Um, there's so many Alex Gonzalez's, I can't keep track of them all. But anyway, so that's how we got Nolden. If you guys don't remember, he's got uh, high potential, but 25 years old, now he's going to be 26 pretty soon. And I think we'll probably give him a look at some point um, at the big league club. But 
we'll see. Uh, then other than that, you know, take a look at the lineup. Uh, the lineup is going to be Michael Hart, Randy Wynn, Paul Konerko, Ken Griffey Jr., David Sagai, Scott Rowland, Jason Baratek, Cipriano Sepulveda, and then Aaron Ledesma. Of course, Ledesma will get replaced by Cantrell at some point, uh, but that doesn't really change too much. So, All right, uh, let's get to opening day. We can take a look at the player rankings, the top prospects, and the preseason predictions. Stuff that we all love to devour and then mock when the regular season is over six months later. But uh, anyway, so I feel pretty good about this team as, uh, you know, I mean, at this point, I feel like we're in the position where if we're not a contender year in and year out, it'd be a disappointment. So I really don't feel like I have to say I feel good about this team at the start of every season now. I think it's it should kind of be assumed. Um, at least in the window we're in right now, we're still in that title contention window. And maybe that window will close in the coming years, but we'll see. We'll certainly see. So anyway, um, let's check some of this stuff out. Season expectation wants us to at least make the playoffs. That should be doable. Top under prospects. Danny Knowlton tops the list. Was he, did he top the list last year too? I thought he was, yeah, he was the number two prospect in baseball last year. But this is, I mean, that's just because he he's, he's a reliever. He's not actually, he's not actually, uh, well, I wouldn't consider him the number two, or the number one prospect in baseball, but whatever, I'll take it. Um, let's take a look at, um, well, let's take a look at these first. We'll do top prospects. So Tampa Bay, batteries. Do we have any batteries? We have Brandon Cantrell. He's number, tw number 69. Nice, as they would say. And pitchers, is it just... Actually, we've got a couple, Nolden, Sadler, and Madurano. Madurano is one of the guys we got off waivers over the offseason. So a couple of relievers. In fact, actually, all those guys are relievers, aren't they? Or I guess... Yeah, they're all relievers. And Domingo is not technically a prospect anymore. I imagine he would make this list if he was. Hey, look at that, Marlon Bird. Some, some, some pretty some names we might recognize on this list. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at top uh, position player, just player rankings both position player and uh, pitcher and see if we've got any devil rays in here I know we're gonna have some pitchers but no position players we do have Barry Zito and Tim Hudson though so pretty nice to see there oh my god Mark Pryor on the St. Louis Cardinals that is a crime against humanity but oh well um and other than that Josh Peckett already looking like a bona fide stud at age 21 for the dot Padres there Mark Mulder, oh, this guy, Wong Sio, he was just drafted, wasn't he? Yeah, 18th. Ooh, we could have had him. We, we almost could have had him. I think we picked, like, 25th or something. Schilling's in here. Chuck Smith, never heard of Chuck Smith. Ooh, a 21-year-old CC Sabathia for the Reds. That's interesting. All right, um, let's take a look at the preseason predictions. So we're slotted to win 100 games this year. 895 runs, 707 again. So it looks like they want our, They think our pitching is going to get a little bit worse, but our hitting is going to get a bit better, which would be nice. Um, top 10 hitters, Ken Griffey Jr. is predicted to be one. That would be pretty... If he slashed that, I'd be pretty satisfied. Um, as well as Paul Konerko. Yeah, if he did that, I'd be satisfied as well. Um, and for pitchers, Tim Hudson and Barry Zito in there. No surprise. And all right. So that is that. And that is going to be do it for the offseason. So we've got the team all set and ready to go for opening day. Um, who's our first game against? Just out of curiosity. Who do we open up against? It looks like it's going to be Detroit on April 2nd. So, all right. We will get ready for that. But in, uh, I will cut out now. And this episode is just about all wrapped up. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Hope you guys are excited for the 2002 season. Hopefully it's one that will bring a World Series title to Tampa Bay. But all right. Until then, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy. And I'm out.